Welcome to Downshift. My name is Matt and this is the new 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLC Coupe. It is bigger, smoother, swankier, and sportier. So what does that mean as it pertains to its main rival, the BMW X4? And thanks to our friends at Mercedes-Benz of Milwaukee, we're going to show you the best and the rest, starting with the rest. <laughs> The first ding that we're going to give to the Benz is the place that we usually ding most Benzes, and it's the fact that relative to the BMW counterparts, it is just a touch more expensive. But in typical fashion, newer is always more expensive, and generally speaking, Mercedes is always more expensive than the BMW, and that stays true here. The GLC Coupe is the newest thing that you can get between the two, and it starts at $57,000, but it does come with 4MATIC all-wheel drive as standard. The BMW X4 starts at $55,000, but it also brings all-wheel drive as standard. So about $2,000 between the GLC and the X4, but once you start optioning packages, things start to tell a little bit different story. And despite having 10 more horsepower and 40 more pound-feet of torque, the X4 actually gets to 60.2 seconds quicker than this GLC. Maybe it's the added weight from the 48 volt mild hybrid system. Maybe it's the nine speed not being quite as sharp as the ZF8 that you get in the BMW. But the truth is this is splitting hairs and you're really not gonna be able to tell a difference in the real world. This thing still feels plenty quick. But honestly, those two things are the only places I can really objectively ding this car, at least as it compares to the X4. But there are a couple smaller things to note in here. For one, your rear seats are great and we'll talk about them a little bit more later in the video, but they are missing charging ports. I mean, what? And personally, I'd probably order my GLC coupe in white with the night package, but white is the only standard paint color. Everything else you're gonna have to pay for. But that's really it. I kind of had to scrape the bottom of the barrel to find stuff that I could objectively ding the car on outside of price and some relative performance stuff. So that means there's a lot of stuff to talk about on the pro side of the video, so let's talk about that. We'll start with the things that sell cars these days. Big screens and fancy technology. And here in your GLC coupe, you got a lot of it. But here now you get the same updated MBUX system that you got last year in the new generation GLC non-coupe. You get wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, a new more vertical style touchscreen that we've seen in the C and the S class. You've got your fingerprint reader for your driver profiles. You can have up to seven different profiles. You get incredible 360 cameras with the augmented reality style view. And the 360 cameras can also function as security recorders if there's an incident. You also get augmented reality navigation, which we've talked about before. Here you get digital headlights, which will read the road signs and project them onto the road so you can see them more clearly at night. You've got telemetry and off-road status screens. You've got pressure sensitive seat adjusters, or you can enter your height and let the car take care of it for you something we originally saw in the new SL. You've got a wireless charger, you've got a touch slider for your optional panoramic roof, and plus, on your off-road screen, you can use the cameras to essentially turn the hood invisible so you can see exactly what you're driving over. I mean, with all that, can you name one thing that you're not getting here on the GLC? It's pretty good. And then there's the drive. It's actually pretty good behind the wheel. There's a new powertrain. It'll sound pretty familiar. It's still a two liter turbocharged four cylinder mated to the Mercedes Benz nine speed automatic transmission going to all four wheels as standard in your uh, GLC coupe here. But now you get the 48 volt mild hybrid system and that power comes in at just about 255 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. And importantly, that's more than the 248 horsepower and the 258 pound feet that you get in the X4. But the 48 volt system here isn't really concerned with improving speed or performance. It's more here to smooth off any of the rough edges and help the car be a little bit more efficient. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But the mild hybrid system here works really well, especially with the auto start stop system. In between gear changes, pulling away from a light, it feels a lot smoother and just easier and almost more grown up and refined. From there though, the rest of the driving experience is pretty much what you'd expect. The damping is soft and comfy, but not wafty or squishy, and the cabin is quiet and isolated from wind and tire noise, and the steering is light and easy, but gives you a good sense of control. Overall, it's perfectly good behind the wheel. And here's a place that got a lot of attention. Now, pretty much everything is bigger and better than it was last generation, but here in the rear seats, yeah, you can really tell. The rear seats are the most noticeable to benefit from the added 1.2 inches of length. They're both big and comfortable, and they feel pretty nice with the bigger sunroof letting in some air onto this lighter interior. This is noticeably bigger than the X4's rear seat. You get rear air vents and an optional climate zone back here, but you don't get chargers, which I think is a bit weird. The only other place that I'll ding it is the fact that this is the coupe roofline, and you can notice that with the headroom. 
but the trunk is also bigger than it was last year. This is 19.2 cubic feet with the rear seats up compared to the 18.5 cubic feet you'll get in the X4. And it's 52.6 cubic feet with the rear seat down compared to the 50.5 in the X4. These seats will also still fold 40, 20, 40, and you do get grocery hangers. I mean, you're not really missing a lot of practicality here. And then there's fuel economy. You know how I mentioned in passing earlier that the 48 volt system here makes this GLC more efficient? Well, it really does. The new GLC is rated at about 26 MPG combined. That's up two from last generation or last year. And more importantly, it's two more than you're gonna get in the BMW X4. So still waiting on a plug-in hybrid, but that'll probably take the form of the GLC 63 AMG. Another thing that won't come as a surprise is it's pretty luxurious here in your brand new Mercedes SUV. You get heated seats as standard, you can get cooled seats, heated steering wheel, you can get heated rear seats if you'd like, and you get seat kinetics, although not a full massage option, and you get the larger sunroof and it still has the slider operation like the non-coupe GLC. This may be a little bit more money than the BMW, but you can tell where the money went. But this GLC is more than just a pretty face. This thing has some muscle to back it up. This thing will tow up to 3,500 pounds, which yeah, it's pretty impressive. And for this point, I know we've talked about the technology, we've talked about some of the luxuries, but I wanna talk about the actual design here because it was a comprehensive rework for last year in the non-coupe, but for 2024 here in the coupe, the new refresh has been brought here. Your new interior design takes after the new C-Class and SL we tested last year and the S-Class we tested a couple months back. And this is what I love about Mercedes. Sure, they're more expensive, but they're so much more visually impressive. There's so much more sense of flair and drama from an interior perspective. Maybe the BMW has a better powertrain and maybe the Audi is slapped together better, but every time you step into the GLC, you're gonna feel more special than the other two. You have this super clean dashboard design with the three vents that cascade into your center screen, which almost seems to melt into your center console. The whole interior is rimmed with gorgeous ambient light everywhere that does dances and even has function effects to tell you things like what your climate controls are doing. I mean, if I had the choice to sit here or in the X4 or in a Q5 Sportback, I'm gonna sit here. And the last thing that we'll talk about is looks because, well, this is a facelift as you can pretty obviously tell. But starting up front, you have a new grille which is a little bit more rounded off and now includes mini Mercedes-Benz star elements, which is a nice little touch. You get upgraded LED headlights as standard. You can get the digital light system we talked about earlier, which will read road signs and project them onto the road for you at night. And then your lower fascia also gets a mild update. And around the side, you have a myriad of new wheel options from 19s to 20s. The profile at large now does look more big car than slopey SUV to me, which I actually like. And the whole rear end design reminds me of the back of a CLA. I think this might be one of the first coupe SUVs that I've actually liked the look of. Let's get into final thoughts. So that is the best in the rest of the new GLC Coupe. And usually I'm not a huge fan of the Coupes, but as you can tell through the course of this video, there's a lot that I liked about it and not a lot that I didn't like. It's a good car. So thanks again to our friends at Mercedes-Benz of Milwaukee for letting us have a go in their nice GLC Coupe. We'll see you in the next one.